Hi everyone, it's Aaron here from Pi Supply again, uh, and today we're looking at the Just Boom Amp. The Just Boom Amp is a standalone amplifier. Uh, it takes a line level input and provides a 2 by 30 watt RMS or 2 by 55 watt peak output to a pair of passive speakers. Um, those speakers can be uh, 8 or 16 ohm speakers, and that allows you to basically plug in a DAC um, or uh, another line level output into this amplifier and receive a nice clear high quality amplified output. The chip that we use is a Texas Instruments amplifier. We'll take a look at that in a minute in more detail. Um, but you know th this board can be used with Raspberry Pi so you can actually stack it on top of our DAC cap or DAC uh, standalone DAC board um, to just give it an extra kick. Um, or you can just use it in a standalone fashion with a line level input um, and an amplified output. Again, we'll take, we, we'll take a look at the stacking on the DAC hat and the DAC in another video, which we'll link in the comments when that's done. Um, but as I say, this is just going to be an unboxing and first look at the amp really. So let's get started. So we open up the box. On the box, you just got what's inside and a bit of info about the product, stuff like that. So pretty simple stuff on the box. Um, I think that's everything, yeah. So we've got quite a few bits and bobs in here. You can see all sorts of stuff. Oh yeah, there's some stickers there as well. So loads of stuff in there. Um, obviously you've got the main board and then a bit of other stuff which we'll go through now. So you've got two little vouchers here from Max2Play. So Max2Play is an audio file um, distribution for the Raspberry Pi. As I said, this product doesn't actually need to be used with the Raspberry Pi, but some people will use it in that configuration. So we provide the voucher and like a little getting started guide for um, Max2Play. Um, and yeah, like I say, you can just build your own multi-room home audio with the Raspberry Pi um, or various different things like that. And those license codes basically just get you, I think it's like a 30 day, yeah, 30 day free license to use the software. Just test it out and stuff before you actually commit to buying it. So nice, nice and useful to have that. Um, then we've got a very similar thing for Rune. Again, Rune Labs is a high quality audio file, audio distribution. Um, it works with Raspberry Pi and a variety of other devices. Um, and this is just like a 60 day um, code for free use uh, and then kind of like getting started guide as well um, with some more information that you can find on their website. Um, so that's that one. Then we've got another similar one, but for Just Boom. So we've got the uh, info card there, which has got the website justboom.co forward slash start. And that just um, has links to all the product descriptions, product technical documents. Um, we've got uh, like written tutorials that kind of accompany these videos. So if you prefer to actually read the tutorial um, rather than watch a video, you can take a look at those there. And as I say, they're all linked from that justboom.co start page. Um, then we've got a couple of stickers, um, a Just Boom, um, Oops, that's the wrong way up. Just Boom logo and the Just Boom full like logo on the icon. So feel free to stick those wherever you want on your door, bedroom door, on your laptop, or whatever. So um, yeah, if you do do that, send, make sure to send us pictures on Twitter uh, or post them in the comments or something like that because uh, we always love to see people enjoying the brand. Um, and then the last bits you can see are the board itself, and we've got some mounting hardware here. Um, this is actually mainly used when you're mounting it on uh, to the DAC hat or the DAC standalone DAC that we've shown in other videos. Um, I'll show you how to kind of assemble it here, but you don't really need it if you're just using it by itself. Um, so just bear that in mind that, you know, if you're just using it by itself, this will probably be surplus to requirements. So um, I'll put that to one side for now whilst we look at the board and then in here. This is just an anti-static bag. It just protects the chips and makes sure that everything is, um, you know, not um, getting short circuits or anything, um, or getting any static interference through the chips. It can cause damage to the chips when you have that. So um, we just keep it in that bag. So 
here is the board. Uh, I think you've got, yeah, you've got the Just Boom logo at the top there and you've got AMP on the bottom. So you can see it's the Just Boom AMP. Um, you can see it's quite a busy board. Um, bit of a funny shape as well. And there's a reason for that, which we'll come to, which is to do with stacking it on the, um, on the DAC hat or the standalone DAC. Um, it's got nothing on the back. And again, that's to do with the stackability, makes it so that you can stack it really um, tightly on top of, I think it sits about two millimeters above the DAC uh, boards. So that's why we put nothing on the bottom, just to make sure that it's uh, completely clean, no possibility of getting any short circuits or anything like that. Um, so yeah, as I say, quite a busy board. Um, we'll take a look at some of the components now. So you've got on the side here um, a block of um, screw inputs. Um, that is the input stage of the amplifier. Now you're probably not going to be able to pick this up too easily on the camera, but um, at the top here you can see in left and in right. Um, so you've got a positive and negative on each of those, in L and in R. That just tells you that it's the left and the right. And then you've got a fifth one in the middle, which is the ground connection. So that middle um, connector there is actually the ground connection. Um, so you can use that just to reduce interference and stuff, but you can just plug in the two line level outputs. It just depends what input you're using, uh, sorry, the line of inputs, you, it just depends what um, you're actually inputting from, but you can tie that into the ground as well. So you have a common ground between the input um, the device that you're using, the DAC or whatever, um, and this amplifier. So um, that is there if you need it. Um, again, all of this stuff is explained in more detail with more technical documentation and pinouts and everything like that. So if you need that, just head to that justboom.co forward slash start page and that's all linked from there um, if you need that more technical documentation. Um, so yeah, that's the input stage. You've then got, um, you've then got here, uh, that's the Texas Instruments Amplifier chip. So the, um, it's, a, it's a Burr Brown chip, so it used to be called Burr Brown, I think they got bought out by Texas Instruments, so it's now a Texas Instruments chip. And as I said, that's a 30 watt RMS um, or 55 watt peak two channel amplifier. So that will do stereo. Um, the other big components you can see on here um, is you've got two coils for the amplifier, um, which are those ones. Um, and then here you've got the, like a little inductor. Um, and then most of this other stuff is just supporting stuff. You've got this stuff here is the power supply um, circuitry um, and the output stage and the power uh, inputs are here. So um, let me show you that. So this is the power input. Now you'll see just above that, there is a little two pin header there called P2 and it's got a plus and a minus. If you want to use power not from a DC jack, then you can solder in a little two pin header into that spot there and you can provide power over that. But normally it's easier to use that, um, I think it's a 2.5 mil jack, uh, DC jack, and that can take an eight to 24 volt input. Um, and we'll go through in a minute a bit more about that. So, um, but as I say, if you'd prefer to power it just off a, um, like a more permanent soldered cable, you know, if, if you're embedding it perhaps into a, some kind of um, fixed art project or something like that, you might want that just extra security of having it soldered straight to the board. So you can do that. And again, it's all plugged into the same power circuitry. So it's still an eight to 12, uh, sorry, eight to 24 volt input that you can take. Obviously, depending on what voltage you put in there, it does change what, impedance the speakers can be um, on the output and it does also change what power output you'll get. So that um, 30 watt uh, RMS and 55 watt peak, that is assuming a 24 volt um, input and it is also assuming, um, I believe, an 8 ohm set of speakers. Um, I'll link to the page where we've got a table laying out all the power supply information um, in, in the uh, description of the video. So yeah, next to that, again, you've got two screw terminals. Um, you can, you might be able to see it. Um, 
it's hidden behind this coil, but it says there's SPKL and SPKR. So speaker left and speaker right, and it's got the positive and negatives on there as well. So you know um, which polarity they need to be. Um, so again, I, I believe this can take up to um, 14 AWG um, cable in both of these um, inputs and outputs. So you can get good quality cable in there and that is enough for um, the power that's going through them. You, you, if you want, you can use higher quality cable, but you probably struggle to fit them into the um, holes in the um, screw terminals there. Um, so just bear that in mind. Um, we've, we've managed to do 12 AWG, I think, but we, we recommend 14 as the max just to make sure you get a really solid connection there. So as I mentioned before, there are, um, there's quite a wide voltage range input. Um, it can take 8 to 24 volts um, on, on there um, from, from the actual 2.5 DC. It can also take um, a 5 volt input straight from the Raspberry Pi. Um, but that will give you quite a low power output on the amplifier. Um, so it is recommended that you use um, a power supply here, otherwise you might just get issues with, um, with um, problems with the Raspberry Pi uh, rebooting and, and stuff like that. So it is recommended that you power it from there. Um, and whether, whether this is used in standalone configuration or um, attached to the DAC or um, DAC hat, the just beam DAC or DAC hat, this can back power them. So if you stack that on top of the DAC um, or the DAC hat, you only need one power supply where normally you might plug in a power supply to the Raspberry Pi or to the DAC, the standalone DAC itself. Um, you can get rid of that power supply and just use this one. So for example, you plug this in here, this is stacked on top of the DAC hat, it will power the just beam amp, the just beam DAC hat, and also the Raspberry Pi, all from the one power supply. So it just keeps it nice and neat, make sure you only need one power supply for the whole setup. Um, so it, it just makes it a bit less cumbersome and look a bit nicer if you've got it on top of your AV receiver or something like that. So, um, and also you save a plug, so nice and easy. Um, so you'll see also on the board, we've got two jumpers um, here and here. Um, I think they're called J7 and J6. Uh, yeah, so one of them is for J7, which is this top one here. That's for the um, output voltage selection. Um, and then J6, which is that bottom one, yeah, is for the amplifier gain. Um, now, those are related to the power supply that you choose and input here. So I mentioned before, but we've got on our website a technical guide, um, which I think is called AMP um, Power Supply Usage Conf um, and Configuration. So if you go onto the website and take a look at that, we'll link it from the, um, the description of the video. But if you go onto that, you'll be able to see a variety of different um, power supplies that you can use um, and how that would then relate to what output power you'll get from the speakers um, as a maximum and it will also tell you what configuration you want those jumpers to be in and it will also tell you whether you can use 8 or 4 ohm speakers or either. So in some power supply configurations you can only use the 8 watt, the 8 ohm sorry um, and so for example if you're using a 24 volt power supply with um, this amplifier you can only use 8 ohm speakers. Um, so just bear that in mind when you're buying this. Um, take a look at your speakers, um, what power output they're rated to um, and what impedance they're rated to. And just uh, you should basically use those two bits of data to inform what power supply you choose. And then from there, you'll know how to set up those jumpers. We're going to do a separate video uh, where we talk about um, different power supplies um, as well in more detail. Uh, so do take a look at that, but uh, just bear in mind that you will need to potentially move those jumpers. Now, they are quite easy to move, so it is just a case of pulling off the jumper like that. And that is just a little, you can see it, it's just like a little black, um, sorry, I kept trying to struggle to pick that up there. It's like a little black 
jumper there that just pushes onto the pins. Um, on the boards, um, you'll see um, just above J6 and just below, I think, oh no, just above both of them, there's a little diagram of how you set up the jumpers. Now we have got pictures on the website, but you can see, um, so for example, the one I've taken off on J7, it says if you put it on the bottom two pins, uh, that would be 14 volts um, output voltage, or if you put it on the top pins, it's 21. So when you see on that diagram on the power supply, um, which one you need, you, you know which to put on there because it's, it's shown on the board. And so you just grab that from the, t you just grab the little jumper from the top and um, you, put it, you put it on top of the um, pins like that. And then you just push down until it's all the way as far as it will go. And then that's on there. Um, it may, they may vary from um, when they come out of the factory, which one um, they have on, uh, which, which one they're set on. So do check that before you, you power it up. It's not gonna cause any major issues, but it's just better safe than sorry. So make sure you just check that you are, you have configured it right um, before, before you plug it in and get it all powered up. Um, so yeah, last but not least, I wanna show you this header on the bottom. Now, if you can see that on the close up, it's like a little um, sort of series of um, pads on the bottom of the PCB, um, little gold pads. Now, it doesn't look like much, but that is actually the header that allows you to connect the um, DAC hat and the standalone DAC when you connect them, uh, when you connect this on top of the, the boards. So, um, yeah, it allows the audio, the line level signals and the power to be shared between the boards. So that's actually um, like a functional part, even though it doesn't look like it. So, um, so yeah, now what I'll show you quickly is getting the mounting hardware on. Now, as I said, this is only really um, useful for when you're connecting it to the DAC um, or to the DAC hat. If you're using it in standalone configuration, you can use it if you want to uh, screw it into uh, some part of your project. Obviously, you can use the hardware, um, but you might want to get your own, um, your own hardware. And, and the mounting hardware is M2.5, which ties in with what the Raspberry Pi uses, um, which is why we've chosen those um, particular ones. So inside here, um, you've got a variety of um, things here. So there's basically three different uh, things. Let me just organize this a little bit better. So you've basically got four of each of these things. So this is a nut, uh, M2.5 nut. Then you've got an M2.5 screw and you've got a little spacer here. I think this is two mil, uh, it might be two and a half. Um, this is just to get the perfect height between the DAC or DAC hat and uh, the amp to make sure that that connector I showed you just a minute ago gets a really good contact. Um, so if you're plugging this into the, as I said, when it's in standalone configuration, you don't really need to use this. Um, if you're using it on top of the DAC or the, um, or the DAC hat, then you would. Um, now, if you're using this with the DAC standalone, you would actually put the mounting hardware under the DAC, then put the spacer, and then put the screw on top. If you're doing it with the DAC hat, then you will already have some mounting hardware from that. So you'll just use the spacer and then you'll use the screw um, from the DAC hat uh, mounting hardware kit. Um, but again, we're gonna do another video that shows you that and how to assemble this properly onto those boards. Um, just because it's, it, you, you need those other boards to really show it in detail how it works. Um, so yeah, that's really it for this, um, for this unboxing and, and quick, quick start to the uh, Just Boom amp. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.